where there is inequity in our application of rules, it makes for an imbalanced society. Of pregnant girls in schools. Now for centuries, the world divided human beings into two groups and then proceeded to exclude and oppress one group. That's Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie in We Are All Feminists. Feminist movements have campaigned and continue to campaign for women's rights, including the rights to vote, to hold public office, to work, to earn fair wages, equal pay, and eliminates the gender pay gap, to own property, to receive education, to enter contracts, to have equal rights within marriage, and to have maternity leave. And one of the leading feminists in Nigeria presently, the Irelu Bisifayemi of Ikiti State, has been in the news. Amongst other issues, she's mainstreamed lately. My favorite is Operation Keep the Girls in School. She had spoken out against the continued expulsion of girls from secondary schools once they got pregnant, while boys, they vary Ikweda with the weapon of life destruction in this context, continue with their studies. They get away with it, literally eat their cake and have it too. And now the baby girl, the elementary version of baby mama, drops out of school, tanks a pregnancy and perhaps a trade, and in most cases, her life is jaundiced forever. A recovery is most times an arduous one lined with shame and stigma. Right, so such girls hardly make a comeback to schooling. Ikete State has now made it a law. Pregnant schoolgirls can now continue schooling, just as the boys who impregnated them. And this is a major win against institutional patriarchy at the very basic level for me. The Tribune, in its editorial of 12th November 2019, took on Irelu Faemi on the law, questioning the moral rights of pregnant students who remain in school and demanding for their suspension from school until a pregnant school girl is delivered of the baby. And I ask what happens in the meantime to his imperial Ikweda, the boy who got her pregnant in the first place. So it wasn't a tango. And I hear morality. Do Nigerians care about morality nowadays? I suppose morality is now old school, outdated, going by the popularity of big brother inmates, oh sorry, housemates. Well, the truth is that abstinence has failed miserably with the younger generation, no thanks to the heightened glamorization of sex through soft porn programs like Big Brother Nigeria and relentless sexual images in the media. Our young ones are consequently, continually curious to try out sex. Nigeria's demographic and health survey in 2008 shows that 8% of males aged 15 and 19 and more than 20% of girls of the same age group had had sex at the age of 15. And nowadays, six to nine year olds are perpetually caught making out at corners. It's the grim consequence of the images we peddle as adults, and we should be very afraid. Now, female condoms should be readily available, that's what I think, and cheap to purchase, like male condoms, so that more women can be empowered to negotiate sex better, and girls then will have a choice to get pregnant or not to. And I believe the obvious imbalance is one of the reasons why abortions rates are so pervasive, or rather so high in Nigeria, and abortions quite per pervasive amongst girls in school. Otherwise, both the boy and girl involved in the making of a pregnancy shall henceforth be expelled from school. I don't believe that one akparo is longer than another akparo. How did we even allow this to be skewed for so long? Look. Operation Keep the Girls in School won't gain traction if you don't advocate for it in your state. And that's it for me. Well said. Well said. I should clap for this one. I yes, think. I like, I like <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She landed that yeah. point. Well. I think this is, this is a beautiful advocacy. Well thought out, well, well presented. presented, and, you know, and, well, you know, obviously a broadcaster, you could tell the voice. Right? <laughs> right <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's move. But, uh, you know, we move, uh, we move still. <laughs> um, but... Clearly, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm all in for this. Um, you know, I mean, the one thing though is the the thing about whether and obviously, I think for to term the 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 the, 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 the child should be 
in school as much as the, the pregnancy is not, be, doesn't become visible because people, you know, kids, they will do all kinds of taunt, things. Taunt, uh, yeah, they will yeah. taunt and do all kind of things. But with regards to the male participant yeah. in this, you should suffer the same consequences. Absolutely. Um, so meaning, if the, meaning if the, if the girl, if, if the, for, the, for the period that the girl is out of school, he should too. Because yeah. you need to, if you don't, if they don't share in the consequences yeah. of that misdemeanor or that behavior, then unfortunately the way, what if that boy goes and does it to another person and just and remains in school? You know? and, so yeah, yeah. so I, I, I think that um, the first thing is we, we clearly have a problem getting more, more of, our, of, of girls, young people, protecting them and getting them in school. That's a major problem. And now when you now add to this, then, you know, you, you, have, you have, so I, I, I completely uh, agree with this. Mm. Uh, the implementation will have to be, again, a little bit nuanced, um, you know, given the fact of uh, pregnancy is obvious, it's an obvious thing and comes with difficulties and complications, especially for a young child, mm. and how to manage it at a young age, because again, it's unexpected, presents right. the yeah, challenges. Uh, unless you can also yeah. manage from, from home, because I know when I was pregnant, yeah. I was able to do my law school, I was able to manage myself and do my exams. So if the girl, because you're not trying to stop her from achieving an education, yeah. you're trying to protect her supposedly from the taunting at school. Right. So yes, there's a way yes, she can it. manage herself, get her notes, and still sit the exam and keep well, up with her peers. One of the things I, I wanted to sorry, very quickly observe was, you know, I remember when I was doing a tour of one of the secondary schools and they, they told me readily that when the girls come in, the girls are usually at the, the first top 10 are the girls in secondary school. Then quickly after a year, the girls drop drastically because they get distracted by the male factor. They're busy looking good for the men and, and the boys. Are you for so, real? Yeah, honestly, and their grades drop. And whereas the boys can handle that in mixed schools, the girls don't handle it quite as well. So I'll just, the reason I'm making that point is to say, Perhaps we need to even do preemptive strikes. We need to train girls to, I think it has to do with self-validation. You don't need to be validated by the male, by figure. The male figure. Learn to know that you're complete of yourself. You have something to offer true, of yourself. True. So build up their, their you know, because a lot of girls are looking for that external validation unless they have parents or a father figure who can give it to them. Yeah. And then they're not looking for another guy to give it to them. So usually that's what makes them, do you say pawns? They fall for a guy so easily because he, he offers them, he sweet talks them. So maybe we can build up their morale that way. Then they know who they are. They're not swayed by any guy who just comes and says, you know, I love you, you know, be my valentine. I think just, uh, I Do completely agree with your point, I think is in line with what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, it's worrisome for me because what we're talking about now is effect. I think we need to go back mm -hmm. to the course, the course yeah. you know, and deal with that issue. We can't pretend and hide that look at that young age the hormones starts to play tricks on our little kids. The they start to maybe, yeah, they yeah. start to discover themselves and they want to experiment. Mm -hmm. So at that point, a lot of education is very important. We need to let them know that these things are happening. It's gonna might happen and there are consequences for them. You know, uh, now legalizing or telling kids who get pregnant that it's okay to get pregnant, I don't think okay, it's you a think good that way. being in school does that? Yeah, in secondary school, if think... you encourage it, yeah. what I would advocate for is there must be consequence. If you get pregnant, both the yes. female child and the male, both school. of them would sure. have to take, have to leave take the school. Yeah. And Which is what, one of so the things that would I discourage said, yes. other kids mm -hmm. from, okay. well, because otherwise. That the girl should continue I said, education. meaning that it's, let's make it a level okay. playground. Yeah. Okay. If you got somebody pregnant, you go away okay. with that person. Okay. Yeah. Right. Someone, uh, uh, some, somebody punctured that and said, what if it's not a schoolboy? who got her pregnant oh, in the I first see. instance. So, yeah, so that's then true. that becomes problematic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's, a, it's an adult somewhere who plays a prank on her, got her pregnant, but she's still a secondary school girl, what they, how then do we I'm still dealing with apply the punitive measure? Not having an education. If she's underage, well, so, it's so. obvious what should happen next. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but if she's too old for school but was in school, then it's different. She's a woman in school. Right. Then I suppose that would be when it's difficult to know what to do to the man involved. But then you let know. me just quickly say uh, that for you talked about the naming and the shaming in school as well. I think perhaps we could have special centers for the girls who get pregnant so they band together, right? Okay. And okay. I think for the fact that we're talking Something. about is yes. the shift it's, in our yes, thinking. Yeah. Yes, I know they're doing that in Sierra Leone right now, quite actively. Oh, yeah. fabulous. Mm. There's clearly more mileage we could do on that one. We'll let you carry on the conversation where we left off. After the break, it can it take the conversation in a different direction or perhaps in another dimension of the same thing. She's advocating for a resetting of our moral standards. <laughs> 